Hanging a heavy picture or mirror on the wall does not have to be a major undertaking. You don't need many tools, you don't need much experience, and there's one product that I go to for about 80 or 90% of my needs where I'm hanging something on either drywall or older plaster walls like this one. I'll do a demo with this full length 25 pound mirror behind me, and then we'll finish off with something you should be thinking about, and that is, hey, when I want to remove this from the wall, whether I'm renting or, or maybe I'm moving out of my home and I'm getting it ready for sale, how am I going to get my walls back to normal, looking good, and we want to avoid as much damage as possible. So let's jump into hanging this full length mirror. So first step, I just want to position the mirror where I want it on the wall, because I'm going to measure the top surface, which we'll reference later on, and additionally, this mirror is going to be spaced five inches away from the wall. So I'll just go ahead and give a reference mark, which will be the left edge of the mirror. So now taking a look at the mounting hardware on this mirror, this is by far my favorite setup, and that is D-rings securely fastened into the frame. That'd be as opposed to maybe you have a wire stretching between because if you know the height that you want, that wire is gonna give quite a bit. So it's a little bit harder to get your measurements to where to put the holes in your wall. So this is my favorite setup. I'll have a screw that's gonna hook onto that D-ring and that screw has a nice little pan head which has a straight lip that's gonna hold that D-ring. The weight of the picture is gonna hang and it's not gonna to wanna to jump off that screw. So that would be opposed to if you had something like a countersunk head that's angled and it'd be a little bit more prone for that possibly to jump off your attachment points. So really the only measurement I need right now is to measure from the top edge of my mirror, which I know where I want that on the wall, and measure down to where that screw is going to hold this D-ring. And for me... That is 19 and 3 eighths. So I'll transfer that measurement on the wall, locating just the screw for this D-ring, and then I'll show you how to reference that screw location once it's already attached to get your second hole location. So I'll take the end or the hook of my tape measure, and that'll be at the top surface, measuring down 19 and 3 eighths to get the vertical mark for that D-ring location. Then I'll take horizontally and I'll measure five inches again away from the wall and then make another mark and X marks the spot where I want my first anchor. So now we have our whole location at least for the first one and we're ready to put hardware into the wall. So let's talk about my recommendation and that is drywall anchors from Easy Anchor. Now you'll see a link down in the description and you'll also see these recommended on my Amazon store which has recommendations to all the different tools I use and also supplies like this. I carry two different types of easy anchors on me at all time. The smaller one which can carry 40 pounds per anchor and the larger which can carry 50 pounds per anchor. It is very important that you get the metal anchors. There are many plastic anchors that look very similar to this. I don't think they work nearly as good as these metal anchors. And there are also several metal anchors out there, but specifically Easy Anchor has thought through the tip design, and that works really well with grabbing onto that drywall, grabbing onto that plaster, and pulling the anchor in, opposed to possibly damaging the drywall and never really getting a good hold. And all you need is a screwdriver. No drills needed, no fancy tools, just a screwdriver, and I'll show you. So plaster can be a little bit tricky, and because the plaster is so brittle, you can have it kind of chip off a little bit more than what you would see in drywall. But all you need is your number two, your number two Phillips head screwdriver. That's gonna fit right into the easy anchor. You place it on your location. And then I usually do give it a nice little tap and kind of set that tip first before I start turning the easy anchor. And then I do place force on the wall as I turn in the easy anchor. Because that's gonna help those threads grab onto the wall and then pull the anchor in making sure you're not damaging the drywall or the plaster. 
Now, one thing is you can notice that it gets a little tight there at the end, but you want to make sure that the anchor is flush with the wall surface. So you might need to pull that in a little bit more. I'll give it a little bit more of a turn. All right, so that's good. Now I'll take the screw and set that in place. Now you could use an impact driver or a drill to make this job quicker, but that also does increase the risk of damage. So I just prefer to use a screwdriver, take a little bit more time, but lower the risk of causing any damage. So I'll set that screw into the anchor until I reach about a quarter of an inch off the wall and then I'll stop because I do want a little bit of a lip here for that D-ring to set on top of. Now we want to position our second anchor. We need a reference dimension between the two mounting D-rings. So you go peak to peak and I have 19 and 1 8 of an inch between the two D-rings. So that's the reference dimension I need to get that second anchor location. So what I usually go with is I use my 48 inch Johnson level. I actually set the level on top of the screw so I do have to make up that distance just a little bit. I'm butting the level against the wall and now I've transferred the dimension on the level marking it right here with a dry erase marker, not a permanent marker. I just wanna wipe it off later on and not mark up my level. So then I make sure my bubble is right in the middle and then I go ahead and transfer that. Okay, now I have my location for my second anchor. So what if you do not have a large level that would make up for it? Well, actually on your iPhone, I'm sure Android has this too, you can go to the measurement app and there's a level feature in there where you can just tape it to a straight edge like this and something very similar where I have a reference mark here, which I'm gonna position on my first anchor, and then 19 and 1 8 of an inch offset from that, I made another mark. And now we'll go ahead and line that up. And that would be, again, pretty close to that line I did with the bubble level. The only drawback on this, and it turns green once you're in the level zero degree range, is there is a little bit more air. So there's negative one, there, there's negative one, sorry, there's one, and, and there is negative one. So I'd kind of go between those ranges, find it, and try to hit that zero mark to be as accurate as possible. But surprisingly, this actually works fairly well if you're limited on the tools or levels that you have at your disposal. So let's sync our second anchor now that we have the location. So it's now time to check our work. I'm gonna take the mirror with the D-rings leaning out slightly. I'll catch one of those screws and then I'll do the same thing on this side with the D-ring hanging out slightly, making sure it has a secure hold and it's on the wall. So now we have it securely mounted. It passes the eyeball test, but I do like to check with my little torpedo level as well and the bubble is right in the middle. So that's good to go. I do also recommend you have attachment points here and then a little bit of weight on the bottom. So the mirror wants to rest against your wall. So it's always good to have maybe some bumper pads on the left and right corner of that bottom frame. And that will just protect your wall a little bit because you might have some additional mounting hardware if it slides on the wall can really scratch it up. Additionally, I think it's good to think about now what happens if I want to remove those anchors. I have a little bit of drywall damage. I recommend this product made by 3M. For DIY homeowners that don't have a bunch of tools, you don't have a bunch of different size putty knives, you might not have that much experience. This actually is all you need for small holes like that. You'd have a putty knife to scrape things off 
This is spackle and primer in one. Without the primer, when you roll on your new paint, you might actually have a difference between the little hole you patched and the rest of the wall surface. So the primer helps to mitigate that issue. Again, you have that putty knife to smooth off the spackle once you apply it. And then a little sanding pad once it dries to smooth off that patch and try to match it up with the rest of your wall surface. Now don't forget, you need to know your wall color. For instance, this is a Sherwin-Williams Friendly Yellow. The code is 6680. I used Super Paint and the sheen was called Satin. So you even need to know the sheen or it's not really gonna match up. And small holes might result in you repainting the whole wall, even if you think you have a color match, but you don't have the exact one. Now, if you wanna dive more into this product and see how I patched a small amount of drywall damage from a larger thermostat when I swapped it out for a nest, check out this video right here. It'll go through the full application. And again, I think this is purpose built for DIYers, and that's also why you find it in our Amazon store. So thanks for joining us on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.